Hello, I'm Kelly Wilde, Tranny Tragic, 80 year old Tranny Tragic, from Barnet in Hertfordshire, about 10 miles north of London. My job, as I see it, is to play a part in the destruction of the Christian religion. Now, most of you won't understand why anyone would want to do that, but if you watch my videos, you'll find out soon enough. versus Wade reversal. American women are outraged. Of course they are. Well, not all American women. Certainly not Christian women. And they think that this God thing they worship is a merciful father who loves children. Oh, he loves little children. Bullshit. This God that Christians worship is the dirtiest, filthiest, most evil, sadistic, bloodthirsty, hideous and ghastly deity ever manufactured in the minds of evil men. And that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show pro-abortion women in America that they have a huge weapon in their armory. They should turn the tables on the Christians who are in favour and who are ecstatic at the moment because of the reversing of Roe versus Wade. Just look at this chart. Uh, before we begin, I want you to see, look at the red line at the top. What is it that way? <laughs> There's your enemies. Those are the people who have bribed the judges the High Court judges to reverse Roe versus Wade. There's your enemies, there's your target, and I'm going to provide you with the ammunition. Stay tuned. Christians insist that their God thing is omnipotent, omnipotent, all-powerful, capable of anything, and let's face it, he must be. He created the universe, like trillions upon trillions upon trillions of stars, many of which are entire galaxies. Just imagine that, you can't, it's too big for the human mind to grasp, but God grasped it because he made it. So a God like that, I agree with you, a God like that must be omnipotent. That being so, why does he stand by while millions of women every year miscarry? They lose the fetus growing inside them. The fetus dies. He could have put a stop to that because he's, let's face it, we've all agreed, he's omnipotent. Omnipotent. 
capable of anything. And yet he stands by while millions of women around the world every day miscarry. Why doesn't he put a stop to it when he could? He chooses not to because he loves seeing children die. He loves death. He loves nothing more than little babies dying before they're even born. That's the God that Christians worship. And don't tell me, oh no, the, uh, he does it because the ways of the Lord are strange. Christians tell me when I ask the question, why does he allow it? Well, the Lord works in myst <laughs> mysterious ways. <laughs> Very mysterious. Over and over and over again in the Bible, Jehovah God slaughters thousands upon thousands of innocent children. Those he didn't personally slaughter, he ordered his butchers to slaughter. Go slay Amalek, kill every man, woman, child and baby, let none survive, saith the Lord. Check it out for yourselves, over and over and over again. This so-called merciful father that 2.4 billion Christians worship was a brutal, savage barbarian. And it's time you read the Bible and learn all about it. Jehovah God taught his priests how to deal with a woman accused of adultery. They had to force her to drink poison. Actually the Bible describes it as water mixed with the filth from the floor. But it had to be more deadly than that because this drink that was forced upon adulterous women, or women who at least were accused of adultery, rotted their flesh. That's how powerful was this mixture. They would drink it under pressure, they were forced to drink it because someone had accused them of, of committing adultery, and it caused their flesh to rot, starting with their thighs. Just think about this for a moment. If the poison was that powerful and that effective, what effect do you think it would have had on any fetus inside that woman? Let's get real. That fetus would die. Was God bothered? He just says, this is what you must do if you're confronted by a husband who accuses his wife of adultery, force her to drink this poison, and if she's guilty, her flesh will rot, and then she must be put to death, if she hasn't already died. You can be quite sure the fetus is dead. 
If she survives, and let's face it, who could, that proves she's innocent and she can go on to conceive, or if she's already pregnant, she may give birth to the child. But this is a direct order from God to his priests. Poison any woman accused of adultery, and if she's guilty, her flesh will rot, and then she must be put to death. This is the God that Christians worship. Absolutely sick. Christians don't know anything about this because they don't read the Bible. That's what I'm here for. That's my job. I'm here to teach you what the Bible is really all about. I could give you a hundred examples taken from the Bible of the Lord God, Jehovah, Yahweh, J-H-W-H, whatever name you choose to give it. I could give you a hundred examples of this God, this very God that you worship, slaughtering innocent children or instructing his butchers to slaughter innocent children. What do you know about the ten plagues that God inflicted upon the, the innocent people, citizens of Egypt? What do you know about that? You probably know, oh yes, uh, let's say uh, he, he sent them frogs and flies and a bit of blood here and there. I'm going to go into that more fully on another video, the ten plagues, starting with turning the the drinking water into blood. What you don't know about that, I'll mention this, but then I'll move on. The Pharaoh of Egypt was prepared to release the slaves after the very first plague, when the water was turned to blood. But God had already told Moses, no way, he'll plead, take the slaves, release the slaves. But I'm going to harden his heart so that he doesn't release the slaves. He carried on with plague after plague after plague. Every time the Pharaoh agreed he would release the slaves. But God kept hardening his heart so that he wouldn't release the slaves. Now we come, we'll jump over the nine, first nine diabolical plagues. We'll come to the tenth plague. What do you know about the tenth plague? Oh, probably very little. But I'll tell you now, this tenth plague is celebrated by international jury every year. It's called the Feast of the Passover. Oh, what was the Feast of the Passover? This is where God, Jehovah God, murdered the firstborn child of every family throughout Egypt. And you might think, oh, firstborn, that means he's the oldest son or she's the oldest daughter. Doesn't matter. He or she was probably in their teens or twenties. Doesn't matter if God murdered a few thousand teenagers or twenty or... Hang on a minute. The Bible says nothing about age. It says God murdered, doesn't use the word murder, of course, it says slain every firstborn child of every family throughout the whole nation of Egypt. That would include one-year-olds, two-year-olds. It would include little babies who were just a few days old, a few hours old. And let's face it, while God was in a slaughtering mood, killing, murdering every child, every firstborn child throughout Egypt, is he going to stop when a little 
young teenage girl is about to give birth, he's not going to miss an opportunity to kill another baby. It's just about to be born. Hang on, <laughs> let's have a look here. I've got a few minutes left. I'll wait until this little baby's born and I'll slaughter that one too. Then I can say, I've got me honour. Because this is what it was all about. God was determined to get honour. And the tenth plague was all about slaughtering, slaughtering, slaughtering the firstborn child, babies, tiny weeny little infants throughout the whole nation of Egypt. This is the God you worship. And you're told, in your ignorance, when you're a little child, little baby, this seed was put in your head, that this monster was a merciful father. I challenge any Christian to find a hint of mercy from this diabolical, bloodthirsty, sadistic deity. There's no mercy, none whatsoever. So here's my message to pro-abortion American women. Use this information to fight back. Remember that chart I showed you? Your number one enemy is Christian women and men. They are the ones who brought this about. This reversal of Roe versus Wade. All you have to do to fight back is to destroy their religion. <laughs> At least injure it. All you have to do to fight back is to show that the God they worship was the number one numero uno global abortionist. No God in the history of gods has so joyfully murdered so many millions upon millions of children, including babies. Read up about it. Check everything I've said. Learn about the Bible. And you will realize, because some of you, even pro-abortionists, maybe because of the little seed that was planted in your head when you were a little baby, you probably still think, oh, God is merciful. Just read the Bible. Check it out. Learn what an evil bastard it really was and according to believers still is check it out turn the tide let's have a little bit of this uh, what's america called the land of the free let's see it let's check it out let's have a little bit more of this freedom stuff my next video will be all about jesus You think that Jesus was such a good guy, such a kind, compassionate person. Let me tell you now, you're wrong again. Jesus was anything but. And you're going to learn about that in the next video.